this video you'll learn how to master the art of hitting headshots every time. Guarantee you have the best vehicles and weapons in every lobby. Know all there is to master by the skill of sniping and learn all you need to know about PvP combat to become the god of every lobby so you can receive messages like this from your worst enemy. I also give access into forbidden tactics players are scared to go against. I recommend keep them written or typing notes throughout this video. I pimps, let's do this! I will be breaking this video up in sections which will then be explained over subsections. These include settings, outfit, weapons, shooting gun skill, sniping, explosives, PvP tactics, land vehicles, air vehicles, advanced tips, and ending with how to practice. Each of these sections will include detailed subsections in each of them to cover everything you need to know. Let's begin. Settings are surprisingly something a lot of people feel to actually change to suit their playstyle. Being the fundamentals of how accurate your aim and speed is, I'd say this is an important first step. I'll show settings that apply to both console and PC first, and a few that are strictly PC only after. Control type is best to be at standard FPS 2. This switches the run button to be on the R1 RB bumper to allow your thumb full freedom on the right analog stick to have full aim control. Although personally, I have been using standard control type since the start. I've developed my own hand position to allow me to use all the needed buttons while still aiming. This is known as the claw, which some of you may know from Call of Duty. I recommend using standard FPS 2 if you are recently new to the game or not using the claw hand position on standard, as you want to have your thumb on both analog sticks at all times during a gunfight. Next, turn off in-game depth of field effects. On PC, the post FX setting will need to be turned on high or very high or ultra for this to be available. What this does is remove the blur on the surrounding environment when aiming in a weapon, which is very important when sniping to give you a full clear of any enemies inside the scope of any angle. This will also increase the few distance of your camera, so the disadvantage of your enemy seeing you from far away without you being able to see them is greatly reduced. As you can see here, just by aiming at this pole, it creates this surrounding blur on all the background picture, which if you're having a sniping battle with another player, and there's various cover points like trees, poles, and even cars getting in your way, it will cause the view of the enemy to go blurry for a few seconds until your scope has zoomed back in on them. In the sniper section, you'll better understand the reason why using cover points during a sighting battle is vital for winning, which is only a benefit if this setting is turned off. Although the only problem is this setting is only available for PC and not console because Rockstar shows no love. Hopefully in the new definite edition coming out or whatever it's called, um, they'll have more settings, which I think they will. So. But here's a clip of me sniping with this setting turned on. Watch as the two enemies go blurry every time my scope aims at one of the trees or poles. Just it, it throws you off and you just sometimes you lose track of the enemy. Brightness setting of course, brighter the better. Easily see in any opposition in dark areas and nighttime fights, which is very handy in an area like the mountains where players naturally camouflage into the environment. But with higher brightness, you should be fairly capable of making the players out. This will have the game not look as nice, more like someone bleached your screen, but you can always turn it back down whenever you're not doing any PvP. The next few settings are to do with being in first person. Later in the video, I'll be explaining the reason in first person is important for PvP in case you're asking yourself at the minute why you would need to change first person settings. But a quick reason I'll give you now is that first person gives you a lot more speed when strafing and running. The two most important settings to turn off are first person combat roll, which as you can see in this clip is severely annoying to keep on and overall spins your screen around into having no clear visual view of your enemy. Having this turned off also provides the ability when rolling to lock aim onto a player to be fired at when the roll is complete so when going back to back rolling against a player you're not limited by being in a first person roll. Next is turn off ragdoll. Similar to the rolling when getting hit by a vehicle, explosion or anything really that caused your character to fall. Having this turned off will bring your camera back out into third person so you don't get confused on which angle you're now facing, as well as giving a clear visual of where the player is. Generally too, I find when rolling or being ragdolled in first person, it creates this unnecessary stress and loss of focus due to your screen literally giving you no chance of facial information. If you are a victim of motion sickness, then look no further than turning off your best friend, head bopping. A setting that not only causes sickness, but can also make the whole experience of first person feel bumpy and honestly annoying when using certain weapons. You notice in this clip I'll do a comparison. Firstly, running with head bopping on, you can see the screen has a slight bopping effect happening, which I know can make some people feel a bit sick. For me personally, I just prefer the smoothness of no head bop, as it makes the game a whole lot easier in the eyes as well. It feels honestly, it feels way faster when doing any type of movement, going around corners, just it just feels it just feels more enjoyable to play. Now with the head bopping turned off, you can see what I mean by a smoother all round experience. It just makes it easier for your brain to register any enemies as well, as looking at a steady picture. First person aim look dead zone, put all the way down, and first person aim look acceleration put all the way up. What this does is make your control input snappier, 
and more responsive to give you that quicker response time reaction. Even though it can be a very small amount of time, it can be what makes you win the gunfight. The sensitivity for both first person and third person is completely up to your own preference and what you can control. Just note a faster sensitivity provides a faster time to change direction and whereabouts you can aim, such as fighting multiple targets at different angles. It really is preference. I recommend spending time in a game mode against bots or online dev matches to try and find out which sensitivity you're best with. The aim sensitivity when sniping at a distance can be set to the lowest amount as when sniping further away the scope needs just a minimal amount of aiming to hit the target and your sensitivity up very high will cause a too sensitive situation for aiming. Finally for first person turn off the auto camera. What the auto camera does is hence the name automatically center your camera into the middle position when not touching the camera analog. Having this turned off gives you full freedom of where you're looking at all times with no automatic force pulling the camera back down. An example of this is when fighting someone who is on a lower or higher ground than you. Whenever you aim out your weapon, the game will bring your camera back to face them completely forward, meaning you have to aim back at the player. You will need to once again manually aim your camera down or up each time, making it more annoying during a battle. Even just running around while looking in the sky to watch for an air vehicle, the game will always bring your camera down to face towards you unless you are constantly holding the right analog upwards. Trust me, you want this off. Moving on to just PC settings. Firstly, the field of view, I recommend putting all the way up to max so you have full view on both sides to see any unexpected players or information that can improve your PvP chances. It makes the movement to feel smoother and faster which can be a mental advantage instead of that slow rush feeling that can get you killed from lack of patience. Being a PC player too, majority of FPS games are best played at max field of view and GTA is no different if that's what you're used to. Alright, in this scenario, pretend we're fighting a player on the roof right, and the POV zoomed in to his max so that we currently have. We can no longer see the road on both the left and right side, but instead we only have the few of this building in front of us. Of course, this is okay for fighting only one player, but against multiple players, you want as much visual information as you can possibly achieve. Obviously, that means turning the POV to be fully zoomed out so you can see the massive increase in both side views, giving us that ability to see any possible threats coming from either side while we fight the player on the roof. This setting is actually available for console as well. I thought it'd be a PC only thing, but I checked recently and it's console of this as well, so congratulations. The mouse input method, have this set to raw input to help get rid of any mouse acceleration as well as turn off fine aim and control as this is mouse acceleration as well. Going back to mouse look sensitivity, it can work out better if you have it as low as you possibly can without it feeling too awkward for you. The last part for settings is key bindings. This as any PC player knows can be vital in your playstyle to give the best advantage in certain situations. With GTA it can provide quick weapon switching. The best weapons to keep in mind for this is for switching to the RPG quickly. By binding this to Q, you can select this using your ring finger easily and quick to react when a situation such as a vehicle coming towards you, enemy camp in the corner or a jet getting too close. The snipers are also great to bind for easily switching between during a sniper fight without wasting valuable seconds using the weapons wheel. Also allowing you to be able to keep your strafe these I recommend binding to keys 1 and 2, so it's all in easy hands reach. The outfit does more than make you look like a sacred hitman that leaves new players suffering PTSD from seeing any bulletproof helmet. Different helmets have various levels of strength to the amount of bullets they can take and it's important to know which is the best. A few helmets that take two bullets to die include the flight suit helmet, the biker's dome helmet and the skull cap. These all take only two bullets so that means only one bullet and then you're sweet. But on that second bullet mate that's a chrome to the dome, you're smoking doobies with Hitler, you're moonwalking with Jackson like you're doing something you are not on earth. Going on to the best helmets that you can be wearing include all of the combat helmets, the bulletproof helmets, the new flight helmets, and surprise surprise, the new riot helmet is indeed free bullets. Choose which of the free bullet helmets you like most. Getting very tactical, you can dress for the environment by using camo, such as the woodland when fighting between nature to provide you to blend into the grass and trees. At Christmas time, I do actually suggest wearing an all white outfit as the snow rocks or ads can be very bright and making the map completely white so why not be a snowman. In normal conditions this honestly isn't too much of a deal as your name card will appear above your head no matter what you wear. But avoid using any bright colours that will make you very easy to spot. I can spot someone wearing a bright outfit in a matter of seconds while a dark outfit blends in more with the natural colour of the game. 
Move next to the gun store to purchase as much bulletproof armor that you can carry at all times to give you that bar of armor. That gives you a great amount of extra protection, especially when most normal players you meet will aim directly at your body with no attempt at a headshot. Yeah, buy yourself the super heavy body armor as this is the only one that will fill up the armor fully while the other piece of armor you have to use a few times to get the full bar. And then um, once purchased, you just go to the interaction menu and into the inventory and then you can find all your body armor and just select the heavy armor and it'll be applied by the wee blue bar beside your health. Purchase a pair of night vision goggles as well to always have it on your character no matter what outfit you have equipped. Although with the combat helmets, night vision will be automatically built in for use. To finish off with outfits, I'll show you how to easily perform the mask and helmet glitch for those of you who want to have your character look as badass as possible while keeping the helmet protection. If you have a personal quarter in any business, such as nightclub, arcade, hangar or bunker, then you luckily have the easiest method. Firstly, have the mask and helmet you want to use purchased, then wear the outfit with your chosen mask on, and simply get into bed at any of these places. Once on the bed, the mask will disappear, but go into your interaction menu and equip the helmet you want to use. Once you have done this, it's just get out of the bed and there you go, looking like a real menace to society. Saving the outfit will keep this glitch active every time you select the outfit. If you don't have any of these places, then make your way down to the beach and find the telescope located just beside the pier stairs. Have your outfit with the mask equipped, then run past the telescope while spamming left on the D-pad or for PC, spam E. This will cause your character to stop while removing the mask. If you enter the telescope, then the glitch hasn't been done properly. But if you are just standing there, then simply go onto the interaction menu and equip the helmet you want to use. Then when selected, walk away from the telescope and there you go. If you go into slaughter lobby, you gotta look the part. Welcome to the world of weaponry. If you haven't already upgraded your arsenal to mark two weapons with the best attachments, then it's time to change your fun with the guns. For those that do not know how to upgrade to mark two, you'll need to use a weapon workshop. These can be purchased inside any of the free mobile vehicles, such as an Avenger, which requires a facility to be stored in, an MOC, which requires a bunker, or the Terabyte, which requires a nightclub. A weapons workshop is also found in the arena workshop or the arcade underground once you have a crew assigned for the casino heist. Although to even unlock the special ammo types and the Mark II attachments, you need to unlock them by doing research in your bunker, which by the way if you haven't got, mm, you need to get it. And the new weapon workshop purchased with the new agencies and the contract DLC also has a weapon workshop for Mark II weapons. Mark II, some weapons typically have a low amount of ammo, especially the snipers, which can't be refilled from your interaction menu like normal weapons, but you can request your vehicle containing the weapon workshop at any time to purchase more, or if that isn't an option, call in Merriweather Ammo Supply Drop using your phone. I'll start with the heavy sniper. Upgrade to Mark II, and the only attachment you need to have is a squared muzzle brick. The bullet types each have their own benefits, which I'll go through, but keep in mind, if you are not that stacked with money, it can be expensive to buy ammo, especially since the gun does not hold that much special ammo at all. Firstly, know that no matter what ammo you have, a headshot is always a one-shot kill. And if you use BST when sniping someone, it will be a one-shot kill unless they are also using BST. The armor patient bullets are very weird. This is a one-shot weapon on players that are using armor, but then requires two bullets for a player not wearing armor. So if you're having a sniping battle with someone you know is going to be constantly applying body armor, then this can be a good choice. But in most battles and overall free roam PvP, it's rare someone will be using body armor unless they are experienced. Possibly just a few times until they run out at least. In Incinidary rounds are the opposite, by being one shot on a player with no armour and two shots on a player using body armour. They aren't necessarily always a one shot kill, but most of the time they are. It can be affected by things like lag etc. This sets the enemy on fire which causes them to continue to lose health after losing the already large amount of health from the sniper bullet. Another benefit is that this can distract the enemy player by filling their POV full of flames and if they're not an experienced player a state of panic can kick in. It's all about tactics man. The next bullet type explosions are going to be your best friend for the rest of your Los Santos days when it comes to going against Chats 
and really any vehicle that doesn't have a large number of explosion health. This sniper can two shot and jet out of the sky no matter what it is and take out helicopters and normal cars in one shot. Honestly amazing if you're against a player that is constantly in a vehicle. When it comes to being used in a gunfight, this is surprisingly not a one shot weapon, but instead forces them to ragdoll for a few seconds. Although during that time, you can reload to the next bullet and shoot again, so I mean, if you have a clear shot of them ragdolled, it's technically a two shot kill but takes one bullet to win the fight. You don't need to hit them directly on the body either, instead all it takes is shooting around their feet and the explosion impact will cause them to fall over. A funny note is that players unaware of Mark II ammo types will straight away assume you're modern and use that as an excuse to them losing for the rest of the fight, or send you chats like this. And this. I don't recommend using this if you're trying to improve your sniping skills due to the fact it's generally an easy and cheap way to get sniping kills as well as the fact it only holds a very low ammo amount costing up 1700 for 4 rounds, very fun though. Next we have the special carbine. This is the best gun for rifle combat, especially when using auto aim. The attachments to make this gun the best is a large scope to provide a more distance in how far you can hit enemies. Grip of course to lower the pretty much non-existent recoil this gun has already. And finally, a heavy barrel. This is one of the best rifles for its damage and headshots, but just don't ever use a suppressor as it reduces the accuracy and damage greatly. Moving on to the Combat MG Mark II, the absolute demon slayer handed down from God himself. If you wanted the ability to absolutely laser people at any distance, then you my friend have just manifested all that you have visualised. Equipping this with incendiary rounds for the ammo type, then put on grip and a fat end muzzle which actually causes you to take an extra bullet before dying. If you are using this weapon, it is mostly known for its high rate of fire and absolutely zero recoil, but always use this in first person. And when aiming any weapon in first person, don't have it so you're actually aiming down the scope, but instead use the reticle in the middle of the screen. With the ammo types, it's good to note that if you're fighting someone you know lives relatively close to you in real life, such as a friend or family member, then equip FMJ ammo type to get one shot headshot kills. Next is the assault rifle. This with the right attachments is a great weapon to use against vehicles that have armoured windows like the armoured Karuma, Duke of Death and the Night Shark for example. The attachments you want to apply are FMJ rounds to provide the armour patient bullet, a large scope for the distance increase, a suppressor even though it reduces damage for some reason it makes it easier to pierce bulletproof windows, finally the heavy barrel. The pump shotgun is a fun and overpowered weapon when in close combat when having explosive slows equipped. This is a one shot kill weapon, although shooting someone with BST on it may take two bullets, but once again like the sniper, the ragdoll effect on them will give them no chance to retaliate unless you're shockingly slow at shooting again. Explosive ammo on any weapon that's not the sniper also blows up vehicles easier, with normal vehicles and bikes still being a one shot using this shotgun with explosive slugs. Three more weapons to go. The next is the heavy revolver. The attachments on this are the small scope and compensator. Then put on the incendiary rounds for the ammo type to make this gun a generally guaranteed one shot kill weapon. Although it takes a bit to refill the chamber with another bullet, you should really only need to shoot them once in auto aim. A fun little glitch you can do with this weapon is to create a weird looking minigun effect. Alright, all right, all right. to first you do this, go into first person, press the left bumper to open the weapon wheel right, but also pull the trigger to shoot at the same time. Do this until the gun shoots while being pointed up into the sky. Once this happens, keep shooting and the last bullet in the chamber will be the minigun man. I'm pretty sure as well if you use this against a player they're gonna automatically assume you're a modder. You can literally use anything in this guide and everyone's gonna be like oh you're a little modder man. It's like nah man. Just an absolute gangster. The marksman rifle is the last mark 2 gun you should have in your arsenal. It comes down to whether you use this weapon in a sniper fight to finish the enemy player if they're on low health then keeping the normal scope is the best option. But equipping a holographic scope gives the ability to lock on the enemies at a close range that can result in one shot headshot kills as well as feeling really satisfying to kill with. If you are a player that typically uses switch aim then it's good to know the advanced rifle is the fastest rifle for this, which if you aren't aware of is when flicking the analogue to change target without aiming out. I'll be going over this in the next section. A side pointer is you can easily switch between weapons and the weapon wheel by either using both triggers so you can change them quicker rather than using the d-pad and on PC you can use the mouse wheel. All right, time. Now we have the general settings put in, you're fully protected and looking like a cracked up marine with the outfits and have all your weapons ready to go, it's time to get into the guide of how to improve your PvP skills.
Firstly, by going back to the controller layout and settings, if you are using the default layout type, you can also choose to switch L2 RT with L1 or RB, so you can use the bumper to aim and shoot. This can be beneficial because of the instant response time the controller has when you press the bumpers, due to the fact it's basically just a button, while the triggers require you to pull down. It is one scan preference and what you're comfortable with. I personally use the default layout, as is what I've done since the beginning, and switching now just makes it more awkward in my playstyle. The difference in first person and third person both hold benefits that mean both will be needed for a fully effective PvP playstyle. The reason behind third person is it brings a good amount of advantages which will be explained in more detail soon whenever I go over your playstyle. But first, I'll explain why in any gunfight you should really always be in first person. First and foremost, guns actually have less recoil in first person than in third, which is what makes the combat MG so OP when used in first person, especially at long distances. If you watch the reticle dot to notice in third person, combat MG recoil causes it to go up quite a bit, while in first person there is literally no recoil. This along with the advantage, in first person your target will appear a tiny bit larger due to the camera being relatively closer, which makes getting a headshot a good amount easier. The next big benefit of first person is what makes sniping in first person something you must do. That is that strafing side to side is way faster and smoother, as third person has this brief moment of standing still when changing strafe direction as you can see here. As well as third person not having the ability to do a fast, short strafe side to side multiple times which when done makes it hard for the opponent to hit a shot. To achieve such a strafing speed in first person, you would have to use alternative controls as in first person, the natural walking strafe similar to a running speed you would have to spam the run button in third to do. In first person, there's also complete freedom in how snappy your movements can be by being able to quickly turn around to a target in rapid time, turning corners and overall any reaction that requires the camera, as well as being able to walk and run a lot faster compared to third. So when in a situation of running away, or hopefully after someone on foot that is in third person, you'll have the upper hand by having a little increase of faster movement. Now your movement, the fundamentals of your chances at winning a gunfight, you should know when shooting at someone to never stand still, because at that point you may as well give them the win unless you're going against an absolute bot. Instead, strafe over side to side or to one side, we call this sidestepping. When in a gunfight, your opponent, if experienced or has watched this guide, will be aiming for a headshot. Counter this as much as you can, always be in the crouch position by pressing in your left analog stick. This is what they call a granny walk. The reason behind this is that the normal task of aiming up to get a headshot won't hit your head, which means they'll have to aim up and slightly to the left in order to achieve a headshot, which as you can probably guess is something not many people are aware of or even put into practice. Combine this with sidestepping to the left makes it a whole lot harder for your opponent to get the kill due to the fact that even though the enemy is locking onto you, their aim dot won't be able to necessarily keep up with you unless they manually aim a lot faster to the left. Just keep in note, experienced combat players will also be doing this. Luckily it's fairly easy to see if someone is doing the granny walk and with practice you'll learn to naturally have a reaction to aim up and to the left. I'll be going over how to have perfect headshots in the next subsection. The next part of movement is rolling, and no I don't mean getting high, not yet. Art of rolling is the one move you have to break your opponent's lock on aim to give you a chance and taking the lead of firing the most shots into their skull. Before speaking rolling, I want you to know that I am someone who always rolls first, just out of my own personal playstyle, which is why my clips usually contain me always rolling first. It's a bad habit, I, I know, but it's it's honestly, it's just, it's always, but it's best to always roll second, especially against experienced PvP peers, which I'll explain now. If you're going against people who aren't that good and you know that, you can roll first, you can roll four times a second if you want because trust the ls laser sport no one's really killed me that much except from like actual pv peers and then at that point i'm not rolling first because then i know at that point like they know what to do you know what i mean rolling first not only breaks your locked on aim but it only gives you time to shoot about two bullets at your enemy until they then also roll although they will have the advantage of locking on quicker due to the short time you have to wait before you can roll again and this time does not affect the opponent that rolled second due to it happening when you're rolling again and unable to shoot. Rolling second pretty much means you get more bullets into your opponent while they can only get a few into you. Although in free aim, I generally wouldn't recommend rolling as the enemy can keep you shooting at you during the roll since it is all manual aiming. But if you are, then it's best to roll first as this can catch them by surprise and when they roll as a reaction you know to be ready to shoot at them during the roll. This will give you a lot more damage dealt towards them. Rolling backwards is always quicker than rolling side to side which means more time for you to shoot your opponent before they can roll again. Best combat roll you can actually do is a glitched one. The ultimate result in a fast backwards spin that for the first half rolls you to the right but then does a rapid glitch body turn to the left. This happens really fast and makes your opponent lose their aim on you for a second. The way to do this is by rolling backwards and doing a U type of motion on the analog stick when your character is kind of sitting down on the ground. I'll have a controller on screen so you can watch me as I do it. But you pull the analog right down to do the backwards roll and keep holding it down until your character sits on the ground and then finish the other half of the U up the right side of the analog. If your character glitches out, then you have done this correct. It may take a few tries to have it happen, but keep practicing this as much as you can and then include it in your PvP gunfights.
Let's move on to shooting. You want to always go for headshots. The only time you are fine with just hitting body shots is using an automatic weapon at a long range or aiming for the head will result in a lot of missed shots. I still remember the day the leader of a great crew I was in over 7 years ago first taught me the art of simply aiming upwards when shooting at a player and I kid you not, something so simple has won me 95% of gunfights. It's so surprising just how many players still don't aim for headshots. All you have to do is when you're pressing the left trigger to aim at the same time, move your right analog upwards. Note the game will offer some resistance due to the auto aim always going for the chest, so push it up at a good firm strength and there you have it, a headshot which is an easy one shot kill for anyone that has not worn bulletproof helmet or using BST. Also note in first person there's a little bit more resistance of dragging it up to the head as there is in third person, so give that a little extra strength of push. As we stated before, remembering if a player is in the crouched or granny war position, then aim up and to the left sort of in a diagonal line to hit their head. This may sound complicated but once you put it into practice, it honestly becomes second nature faster than anything else and the best thing you can practice on his NPCs before even trying it on players. If a player is sidestepping to the left, it's always good practice also to aim the headshot slightly more to the left as it seems to be more accurate headshots. Can't stress this enough that if you aren't aiming for headshots every gunfight then you've just found the secret recipe to PvP, enjoy it. Also when shooting at a distance in third person don't forget to press the right analog in to get that zoomed in effect which will make the target bigger and a whole lot easier to hit. This can be done in fairly close combat to ensure you have full accuracy. Like I said before, at a great distance stick to shooting at their body as at such a distance the bullets missed from trying to hit a headshot can be enough to lose you the fight. If you're fighting multiple players at once in a full assisted aim lobby, it's good to use the ability to change target by flicking the right analog stick. This saves you needing to aim out and aim back in just by automatically switching you to the enemy while still aiming with your weapon still firing. This is really just best if the enemy players aren't rolling which is rare. Always try to eliminate your target with one shot as much as possible, for aim lobbies especially as when firing a lot of bullets it can cause weapon recoil. Pre-firing when in a situation where you think the player is going to peek from corner or wall can give you that quick headshot kill without even needing to wait until you can auto aim into them. You see this a lot in 3M death matches when predicting if a player is going to appear from behind the wall. Using pre-fire could also give you the ability to bluff a player by giving them the illusion you have a line of sight on them, which can sometimes cause them to perform the first rollout towards you or change location. Another good way to bluff that I personally use myself is using explosives. Using sticky bombs or the grenade launcher towards an enemy that is camped in a certain location can cause them to retreat out of that location, therefore putting them in a vulnerable position to be killed. Of course you want to aim to kill them with the explosives, which I'll go over in the explosive section of the video, but even if you don't have a chance of killing them with the explosives, having them blow up near the player quite a lot of times can cause the player to panic as for all they know they're about to get blown up. You can use this tactically to push a player towards a better location in your advantage whether that be to get high ground or remove the enemy from a high ground position as well as if you need to retreat back to get vehicle or more ammo. Keep explosives and bluffs in your tactic book. Moving on to your playstyle. Your camera should be your best friend when it comes to useful tools for PvP. After all it's what shows you where the enemy is and all the possible ways they can attack you. Use it to secure a good location that gives you cover from all sides as well as constantly scanning around during combat for any possible threat of an off radar player, RC drones or possible enemy attack points you may not be aware of. You never want to put yourself in a situation you don't have at least one possible escape route. Alright, watch this example. Straight away at the camera we can see two possible roof access points but jumping on the dumpsters. Which, then just right after we can see to our right that this leads across to a higher access point for a better attack plan as well as an area of regenerative cover. Moving the camera around to check our left side, an escape or an enemy entrance point is seen as well as a garage area to take cover in if needed. Continuing down the alley way more information is gathered. Another roof access point, various forms of cover and the distance it seems there's more high ground access we could use. And just about 10 steps later, a promising amount of visual camera data is gathered. Four points of cover to protect from fire's angles. Access onto the higher ground point we just spotted. And what seems to be a stretch of high wall cover we can use if being pushed from behind. This is all important to consciously take in so you're ready for any PvP situation. Next on our left view, another entrance or access point is spotted, along with high ground access if an enemy is coming through the alley, a high wall perfect for performing a grenade launcher ricochet kill, and two points of cover. Right, nearly at the end. Doing an important quick reverse camera look to check for any off radar player threats coming from behind, with four good sized cover points if that was the case, and our access onto that wall of cover we spotted earlier. Finally, I think you get the idea now, another alleyway with two walls of cover that can be used. Of course there is more alleys and various other points, but this is just a quick example of what your camera needs to be doing.
Altogether, our camera collected 7 possible high ground access, 3 escape entrance points, 20 possibilities of valuable cover, and 1 perfect explosive ricochet spot. Hope you get the hang of what I mean. Using your camera to find a player can be done too, whether you are around the corner, on the other side of cover, or in a high ground, low ground situation. This gives you the ability to see what weapon the player has out to know what you're up against, as well as letting you know the perfect time to come out and attack them. An example of this has helped me is being around the corner of a wall, and the split second I noticed my attacker pulling out a sticky bomb, I quickly ran out and headshotted him before he had a chance to throw the bomb. When in a battle, run into a new location, use the camera to identify any possible ladders, steps or climbing possibilities to secure yourself a better advantage, especially if in an alleyway with no option of cover and a player's coming around the corner. They can use the wall as cover, but unless you have found a route to either move to high ground or leave the area, you'll need to fight your way out at a disadvantage of no cover versus cover. But of course our good friend Explosive can win that fight. Basically, don't let your camera just sit in its natural state when not shooting, but instead always be peeking at an angle. You can see the enemy before they can see your character, so you can think first then shoot, instead of shooting and leaving the thinking for last. Having a prediction of the enemy's spawn can be beneficial too. Remember, unless you're in a fight with a lot of different players, it is rare the game will have you spawn directly beside each other, although majority of the time you will be spawned just a few blocks down from each other on the same stretch of road depending on where you are. So have your sniper out ready to snipe the player as soon as they respawn. Or if you're the one that has died, be prepared to quickly jump into first person if you haven't already and get into a sniping battle. It's also good to note, if you're against players that are in a CEO or a biker club, whatever, the employees always tend to spawn close to the CEO or the leader of the biker crew if they're in a close proximity location. Depending on where you are on the map, spawn predictions can vary from in the main city, a spawn just around the corner or down the road will almost always happen, but 9 times out of 10, it will always be a situation you could be aiming at the player within under 5 seconds. Always stay on your toes, ready to start firing again. As well, if you're with your friends delivering hell on an opposing team, it is highly likely that if your team is mostly located around one side of a location, your enemies will spawn at the opposite side or behind your teammates, so a widespread of map coverage for you and your crew can be good to get a good mix of spawn kills. Final and most important factor of playstyle is evaluating and understanding your enemies' strengths and weaknesses to then use it against them. I am yet to find a player that is great at all strands of PvP. Some examples are their ability in sniping, overall gun skill of ARs and combat rolling etc. Using jets for both dogfights and getting ground kills. Use of explosives at any range and if they are a dirty player or not. You can quickly work out these things after fighting with them for a while or first watching them in the lobby. Players typically good with the jet will of course be flying jets. Snipers love being by the beach as you probably feel figured out, if your opponent isn't good at sniping, then engage in mostly sniping. If they're weak in a gunfighting, but are always running to a jet, then keep them running and gunning them. Then when they run to their jet, pull out your explosive rounds on the sniper, and it'll take them out in seconds. If the player seems to be good at his aim for explosives, then restrain from being in between areas that grenades can bounce down towards you, or being at a distance that leaves you with no chance to shoot them down, but they can shoot the grenade launcher over buildings. Knowing these strengths and weaknesses can be identified by the type of player they overall are. I'll show you the different types. We have the griefers, cargo, destroyers, basically the players the community can all have a mutual dislike for. Getting cheap kills and defenseless players, majority of the time these types of players are not that good and always hide behind a mark to oppressor. There's the noobs, the new or unexperienced players still learning how to drive a car with no interest in PvP. These players, as we can guess, are the civilians of the PvP world and offer no threat except running you over or shooting at your car window in an attempt to shoot you. Typically respectable to leave these players alone unless they keep trying their luck to kill you, then feel free to beat them with a bat. Next is the modders. In terms of PvP, don't waste your time. On PC, you will find yourself in a situation god modders use. Or you're in a PvP battle with normal players, then a modder decides to intervene and hide behind his mod menu with the mental state of a flooded sperm bank. You get nice modders who bring fun to the lobby, but with PvP, just change lobby. With the reassurance, most modders started abusing god mode because they were getting slapped about in PvP and didn't bother watching a guide like this. You have the glitchers. Not so common anymore, but there was a time in GTA Online where players were abusing the glitched areas where they can shoot anyone that was in the area, but you would not be able to see them. It still happens now and then, but if you find yourself going against this type of player, spam rockets at the wall or ground they're glitched in to see if that works. But if not, leave the area and let the board and bring them out. Although I have seen someone stay in one of these glitch spots for at least 3 hours with no players near them. A mystery we may never know the answer to. There's also god mode glitches that pop up, but same as a god mode modder, just change lobby. 
Next is the grinders, the business lovers selling cargo all the time. Personally, I would never do this in a public lobby, but a lot of them do test their luck. I've never had any confrontation from a player like this, and attacking their cargo is just a weird thing to do when it provides no benefit for you. That leads on to the next type of players, wannabe tryhards and actual tryhards. The wannabe tryhards kill an average players while being toxic with the messages they send, acting like they run the lobby. Most likely constantly run into their Mark II oppressor or jet every time with no actual engagement in a gunfight. These players are fun to kill, but get boring when every time you kill them, they run away and attempt to get a weaponized vehicle just to be killed again. Then you have the actual tryhards, the players fully suited up and have every strap from this guy to second nature muscle memory, ready to attack anyone that wants it. Generally, they don't offer the first attack unless it's a boring lobby or they notice you're getting a lot of kills for yourself. I guess the animal instinct comes out to show who's the real king of the lobby. These are the players you'll learn and get the most practice against. Even though you may be getting destroyed, it will all pay off. Keep in mind there's tryhards out there that will blow their self up or take the easy way out if you get their health down even the littlest bit. In my honest truth, unless you're good with a sniper and are hitting one shot kills, you shouldn't waste your time with people like this unless they aren't the best to where you can finish them off in a gunfight before they even have the chance to blow their self up. Taking the easy way out during a fight is a cheap thing to do unless your opponent started doing it first then go ahead fight fire with fire finally we have the civilian slayers technically this falls under the wannabe tryhard category but there's normal players who do this too it's the innocent slaughtering of the low levels to be fair these players can range from being bad to being good at pvp you may as well start a fight with them instead of them get free kills and low levels Now we're diving into the archives of sniping. A big aspect of free run PvP you'll need to be at least somewhat good at. First things first is knowing that the setting to actually control the scope sensitivity for both third and first person is the setting third person sensitivity. Adjust this to the lowest you can handle, but like I explained earlier, with sniping at a distance that causes the player to appear a smaller target and it will only be small movements of the scope that will hit the target. A high sensitivity will make it a lot more of a challenge. Constantly stay in first person for all sniper battles to ensure a fast strafe from side to side is happening to make your enemy need to really work for the kill. Don't just strafe side to side in a simple rhythm as this makes it easy for your enemy to predict your next move but instead do a unique unpredictable way by changing size at a rapid speed going further on one side than the other at different times any type of pattern that isn't predictable constantly change it so the enemy will have to pre-aim in various places to try and hit the shot with no clear prediction during this quickly study your enemy's strafe as most players do tend to stick to the same patterns meaning you could easily work out where they'll be during a strafe for that quick kill it really is all about timing and the prediction of the opponent's next strafe location but sniping really is the one thing that you will get better with over the course of time. I found that the more confident you are in sniping, the more chance you have of winning. Could be a combination of taking more shots without the hesitation and strafing with more courage. Once you've got better with sniping to the point you can hit most shots all the time, then begin going for headshots so you can constantly get one shot kills. Of course it's a smaller target than the body, but it's a massive advantage if you can hit the shots. Also remember to shoot as fast as possible if you have your aim right so you and the players are sort of trading shots to each other until someone gets the kill. As if you keep waiting for the right time, you've already given your opponent two free attempts of killing you. And for a lot of players that is more than enough. Using your surroundings as a natural cover is a useful tactic too. For example trees, lampposts, walls, cars, hills, so your full body isn't in the view of the opponent meaning they will have a smaller chance of hitting a shot on you. A lot of times I find myself getting saved by a simple lamppost when having to reload my sniper as well as peeking the strafe out of cover to shoot my shot and the strafing back the other direction. My character can reload the next bullet while strafing behind the cover in an attempt to block any bullets coming my way. Also remember with a sniper it is fairly easy to spawn kill players if they have spawned within a line of sight on you, especially if you have mastered the ability to hit most shots. A tip I don't see many people doing but could be useful in a long distance sniping fight is turning on expanded radar in the settings. Although you can access this by pressing down the d-pad twice, it can be beneficial to have an expanded radar at all times to see exactly where the enemy has spawned. By knowing the map, you should be able to scope it directly at that location. Speaking of sniping long distances, unfortunately in PC, the distance you see a player can depend on the PC specs you have. So if you notice your opponent is able to kill you before you can even see them, then I suggest moving closer. Also check in your settings that the player overhead display is set to display their gamer tag, and not just a short version, as a lot of the times it's the above head gamer tag that gives away an enemy's location, especially on the mountains. The game is handing out free advantages, make the most of it. When it comes to sniping vehicles, it is all about timing. With a flying vehicle that is going past fast, aim a bit in front to take into consideration the split second it takes 
for the bullet to hit where you're shooting and by that time the driver's window should be in that position. It can be very tricky to shoot someone out of a fast moving vehicle such as a Mark II oppressor or jet and most of the time it comes down to luck but like we've already mentioned just use explosive ammo. If you're attempting to snipe a player out of a vehicle be sure to equip BST to avoid a hit marker. BST stands for Bull Shark Testosterone. This can be dropped by calling a Brucey on your phone by paying a fee of £500 or sorry dollars or becoming a CEO or MC president and getting it from the interaction menu. What BSC does is give you a temporary buff in health and damage dealt. The added health by the way allows you to survive one RPG explosion on your character if you're wearing full body armour. And the damage dealt buff guarantees a one shot kill when using a sniper. There is a way for PC players to set up a macro that if one press of a key will drop BST as quick as possible. I will explain that and another useful macro in one of the upcoming sections. Fun of explosives is something this game doesn't disappoint with, but there's a few pointers you should be aware of to improve your overall knowledge of handling explosives in a PvP situation. The two rocket launchers, RPG and Homa Launcher, both have different distance, speed and damage. The RPG has a slower rocket speed than the Homa Launcher, although it provides a greater explosion radius, as well as only taking one rocket to take out a jet, while the Homa Launcher takes two rockets. The Homa Launcher also has a very far distance it can reach, while the RPG is much shorter. Rockets can be very useful if the player is attempting to drive away for an escape or if you can time the RPG so good that you can hit jets that are about to fly down towards you on an attempt to kill you. I rely on my explosive ammo for jets so I'm personally not mastered this but it's all about shooting in the predicted spot the jet is going to fly in. Although place a sticky bomb by your feet to blow yourself up as soon as you have shot your rockets so the jet can't kill you. The best weapon when it comes to on ground explosive combat is the grenade launcher. This is capable of delivering kills both up close and at a distance over multiple buildings. You can practice this by finding the spot and making a conscious note of an estimate of how high you need to aim for the grenades to land in a specific location. I recommend practicing first in an open area and then move on to doing it over Farah's buildings. The reason this can be so good is by learning to spam it. The spamming technique can be used on the grenade launchers and both the rocket launchers. This is done by shooting a grenade or rocket and then quickly switching to a sticky bomb then quickly back to the launcher and fire again, then repeat. The speed of the spam really determines how fast you can switch between the launcher and sticky bomb. Keep in mind, if you are on PC using a controller, the input delay can make this not as fast as it would be in console. The grenade launcher can be spammed simply, for example setting the sticky bomb to keybind 3 and the launcher keybind to 4, although keybinds are really our preference. The grenade launcher can be spammed simply by being in cover without needing to do any switch between a sticky bomb, which if you're in a situation you and the enemy are both taking cover opposite to each other, spam 10 grenades with them in seconds and take that easy win. The benefits of explosives can be beneficial when used tactically and of course non tactically. If the enemy player is taking cover at the corner of a wall or by the rim of a roof then fire a rocket launcher at them and unless they move it will be a guaranteed kill. You wouldn't believe the amount of people who still think taking cover behind a roof wall is rocket proof. I never take cover by a wall or a roof because of this, unless it is to spam the grenade launcher. Explosives can also be used as a distraction for repositioning. If the enemy is camping a spot or is in a place of advantage, then fire rockets and grenades towards them to force them into moving. This can give you the chance to take that advantage. Setting traps is always a fun thing to do. If you're being chased in a vehicle for a sticky bomb on the road, to blow them up once they are on it. Although detonate it just before they are on top of the sticky bomb if you are driving at a fast speed. Find a vehicle your opponent might get into, place a proximity mine or sticky bomb on it to blow up once they get near it. Not only will this kill them, but also increase their levels of anger. Another scenario is if you are fighting in between buildings or corners, place a sticky bomb at a few points and then when the enemy runs to that place blow it up. You can lure them there by running away in the direction that result in them going down that area. Especially if they seem to be an impatient player or if they are running away mostly, just run on the opposite side. Your minimap is great to know when to blow the sticky bombs. Keep a mental note where you placed it, just in case you get a fair distance from the area, and then notice the enemy on the map is beside the bomb, blow it up. I mentioned before, but will remind you that going against the player using explosions, wear body armor and then use BST, that's going to allow you to survive one rocket shot. Yeah. 
map knowledge is an important factor for both your confidence and playstyle. Knowing where certain vehicles spawn like helicopters, boats and jets for the scenario you ever need a quick escape or need a quick way to get towards a faraway enemy. Both Trevor's airfield and the Los Santos airport are the most known spots that both have random helicopters and planes spawned in, as well as the helicopter landing location by the docks. Of course this docks also has boats spawned in and by the pier you can find jet skis there at all times. You can use this map on screen to keep a note of all the spawn aircraft locations along with the possibly variation of the aircraft type. But you never know when it can come in handy for an easy access option to quickly move location. The fighter jets from the military base are still one of the best jets to use and if you have purchased a hangar here you can easily steal a jet each time you're there. Or if not just jump the wall using the car over the fence and just quickly get it before getting shot down. Another part of map knowledge is understanding where hostile NPCs spawn to avoid moving a PvP battle there and then find yourself getting killed by the NPCs more than the actual player. Three gang areas, Grove Street, the Ballas, the Fagos are the most notorious for shooting back but the multiple police stations will immediately open fire to as soon as you have shot a weapon. In Southern San Andres there's a few NPCs usually riding dirt bags or driving rusted trucks that will open fire with their pistol as well as the lost MC hideout in the city beside the casino. These aren't that important to remember, but I can see with the annoyance of getting your health wasted from NPCs, which in a fight can give your opponent an easy kill. No one access to various tunnels and hidden rooms make for sneaky attacks and escapes too. As well as overall having good map knowledge provides you the ability to constantly know the best positioning in any attack, whether that's to do with high ground, the best cover or shooting points, places to place traps, or where you'll have full covered view in a fight containing multiple players. If you're not familiar with the map by now, spend your time picking fights with players all around the map and constantly scan the areas for ways you can gain more advantages. Next is learning to use the environment. This can be from using your surroundings to ricochet grenades off of poles or walls to hit your enemy in a spot that they're in without them having a chance to even see you. If you're on a rooftop and the enemy is below, look around for any objects that you can use to ricochet a grenade over by throwing or using a grenade launcher to hit them at an angle you may not even be able to shoot them at using a rifle. This also works if they are down the road, stick a sticky bomb onto an NPC car that will hopefully panic drive past them or shoot a rocket at an NPC car to cause an explosion that will kill the player. The high ground is usually always better, especially in a 1 vs 2, 1 vs 3, 1 vs 4, any situation really, or any situation as it provides better control on the situation. Also when dealing with multiple people, you don't want to run towards them if they are together, but once you have them separated, keep applying pressure to keep them separated so they can't all shoot at once, but if they are above skilled players, then let them come to you so you can keep control of your cover, entry points and ways of killing them. Whether that be good range response sniping or constant cover so the enemies will have to work to try and kill you. Keep in mind when using cover, you should really avoid cover on the corner walls, fin walls and behind roof edges as all it takes is one rocket or sticky bomb to kill you. Instead hold back and use your camera to look over at your target and then strike when the opportunity is there. There's also a few cover points that allow you to look over but not shoot, as well as showing parts of your body behind the cover that if you're not aware of can get you killed. Another good few tricks to add to your tactic book are that if you're in danger of being killed by an orbital cannon, there's a few places that are orbital proof. The hangars at the military base on Los Santos airport, the multi-story car parks if you're in between one of them parking floors, underneath large bridges and going inside the construction buildings are all orbital proof. Although it is impossible to know if an orbital is being aimed at you, you can guess by seeing your enemy go inside their facility. You can also check your respawn location before spawning after dying to a player by pressing pause as soon as you die. This will show where you will spawn before your character physically spawns in so you can prepare to use the right weapon or movement to get onto your enemy. You can also spam rockets or the grenade launcher towards the location you predict the enemy is going to spawn. Also, become a CEO in every fight. This brings so many benefits such as spawning in vehicles, both air and land, right beside you. The ability to use ghost organization so you and your affiliates can appear off the radar for 3 minutes. Also can get BST and armor every once in a while. Don't listen to the players that say what well, you can and can't use in PvP. Fair play if it's a respectful fight of on the ground guns, but if your opponent starts using cheap tactics, then go all out and play it dirtier. I'll go over a few of the best land vehicles, some of which can be flown, that you should have in your arsenal. I recommend throwing on a sticky bomb to some of your vehicles if you're going against a player using any vehicles that have homing missiles so you can easily blow yourself up before the missile hits you. This also saves you from needing to use the easy way out as it now has a 5 minute wait time after being used once, so save it for a time you may really need it. 
although I'll show you various ways to avoid missiles without needing to die or get out of your vehicle. Choose which of these vehicles will best suit your playstyle. The first vehicle is the Ruiner 2000. This is a fast driving car with homing missiles that are really accurate against land vehicles, Mark II oppressors and helicopters. If a helicopter is flying past the front of you while you are driving, you can easily take the heli out without needing to try. Although the machine gun is not that good unless shooting at a player, the car also has a jump feature for the car to bunny hop and use a parachute. The jump can give a good opportunity to shoot homing launchers to any helicopters flying above you. The vehicle Scramjet is a master of all the vehicles for being able to jump with a boost to fly very high into the air. And switching to first person with the missiles can allow some great kills, especially when the enemies are on top of a roof. Using the Scramjet will give them a beautiful attack from heaven. Next is the Torito. This is a vehicle that can also drive underwater, so your choices of both land and water escape are available to use. This vehicle takes two missiles to blow up and has unlimited missiles itself, as well as not having a special icon show up on the map for other players to indicate you're in a weaponized vehicle, so you can get the surprise attack on players. This is overall a fun car to use, and with its boost ability, it makes for a very fast vehicle that can outrun homing missiles. The Deluxo is a very effective car, with full ability to fly to a very high height. The Deluxo has very accurate homing missiles that are fast enough to take out a Mark II oppressor with ease, as well as fast cars driving away. The sharp turning on the Deluxo makes for a perfect vehicle to easily manoeuvre around oncoming missiles, especially from a Mark II oppressor. The Deluxo is also good for reaching high ground like buildings. It's a great vehicle to have at the ready to keep you that choice to fly anywhere at any time and use the missiles to wipe out players. The next vehicle is best used with two or more people to be used to its full potential, although it can still be used solo. The APC. It has a missile turret that rapidly shoots missiles, able to take out players on foot, in cars, or flying in an aircraft. The missile turret can be used by a second player, while another player drives the APC around to start a path of destruction. But if you are solo, the APC must be at a full stop to then switch to the turret yourself by holding left on the D-pad. Being stationary with the APC makes it easier to be killed, and overall aircraft will avoid you. The APC can also float in water with no damage taken. A tank of a vehicle that will be your best friend against withstanding Mark II oppressor missiles is the Night Shark. This vehicle withstands 27 homing missiles and with the Mark II oppressor only holding 20 missiles, this makes an absolute beast. You can also easily just repair the Night Shark in Los Santos Customs to replenish the full health, although it only withstands 9 RPG rockets, which is still a large amount compared to other vehicles. The Night Shark is very fast for its durability and if you're a free aim player then you should definitely purchase this, but remove the window armour plates so you can use sticky bombs and guns while wearing a bulletproof helmet and you'll be practically impossible. To kill. I need to inform you of something I see so many players constantly doing and it breaks my heart to have to kill both their confidence and their player all in one. It's that armoured windows are not bulletproof whatsoever if you're facing against a player like you'll be after watching this guide, as you know how to aim for headshots as well as the best weapon to kill a player in an armoured car quicker. The Night Shark for example is one of the easiest vehicles to shoot someone out of no matter the weapon used. Unless you're in a free aim lobby, do not drive your Night Shark towards a player. Although even in free aim, a player can use the alien laser gun or minigun to kill you easily. This goes for all armoured cars, arena included. Specialised vehicles that have actual bulletproof glass are bulletproof, although quickly break after not even a full mag of the gun is shot at the same spot in the window. Of course the Mark II oppressor is on this list, but I even need to explain why I use this turret machine. A quick hard to hit bike with homing missiles that can fly to great heights. Very controversial vehicle, but once you buy it, it's hard not to use it. There's a cooldown on when you can call the oppressor again from the mechanic after it's already been called recently, but if you have it stored in your terabyte, you can call the terabyte and it'll arrive with the oppressor in it. So you really get two deliveries before there's a cooldown. If you want to take down jets with the oppressor, it is useless to spam homing launchers at them from behind as it will most likely never hit them unless their engine is already smoking causing them to slow down. Instead fly along with the jet at a position they can't get a homing launcher aim on you or an aim of the explosive cannons. Keep flying while watching the jets flying directions until you see an opportunity where you'll be able to fly the oppressor so you're either going to be flying directly in front of the jet or going straight into the side of it Then spam your rockets and this closes the gap of the jet being able to outrun the homing missiles. Also remember the oppressor is a very loud bike that can be heard from quite a distance so when off the radar doing a sneaky attack, fly slowly and land softly to reduce any noise as you see here in this clip. This player was camping on the roof with an explosive sniper being an absolute nerd but forgot to keep awareness of his surroundings, allowing this sneaky tech down by your one and only OG. A final note for vehicles are a sport bike and a fire truck. I find when doing on ground combat, a sports bike like the Body 801 is a simple, fast and agile way of transport to get to A to B, whether it's far away to get a jet or to drive to towards the enemy if they have spawned far away after you kill them. The fire truck, fortunately it cannot be stored, but if you find someone in god mode in your lobby, use the fire truck cannon to ragdoll them constantly. It'll be annoying to the point they'll leave, or just if they're a modder they'll most likely just put you in a cage, but you know, worth a try.
aircraft's gonna be one of the hardest parts of PvP to get good at, due to the whole variety of different vehicles and knowing how to dogfight in jets, it's not as simple as fan after someone. Let's start with helicopters. By going over some strats using helicopters, then show some of the best ones to choose from. This first tip relates to jets as well, which is that first person will always provide you the better aim for both missiles and explosive MG ammo. You can also go in the settings to set first person to appear on the top of the hood of the aircraft to give you a clearer view of where you're aiming, rather than looking from inside the cockpit. Luckily for PC players, if you have this setting turned on, you can press the key on your keyboard insert, or press in the right analog if you're using a controller plugged into the PC, to switch between cockpit view and front hood view. I'm not 100% sure on if this doesn't also apply to console, as I've never tried, although I read on a Reddit form that it didn't. Get into a habit of using first person when firing shots, as it will quickly improve your shots. A nice trick to know is that if you fly directly above a player, they can't look up forever enough to actually shoot any rockets at you. Doing this with a buzzer can provide some easy kills. The buzzer can quite sharply face up and down, so when doing a rocking type motion back and forth above a player, it will eventually swing forward so much that you can actually shoot missiles straight down to the hopeless players. Besides that tactic, I would really not recommend using a buzzard. It can be shot down easily from rockets, snipers and even normal automatic weapons if you're flying at a low height. If you're in a helicopter, you don't want to be flying near an enemy unless you're attacking. Don't give them any time to attempt to shoot you down. Even if you don't have a clear shot and an enemy is near, by either fly behind cover from surrounding buildings to prevent a homing missile or explosive sniper round hitting you. You should also start firing missiles to force them to spend their time trying to stay alive which sometimes can actually result in an enemy moving to a better position where you can get a clear shot in them with your missiles. If you're in a situation homing missiles or heading after you, there's two things you can do. If the missile is coming towards you from the front, keep flying forwards to make the missile travel just underneath you. And vice versa, if the missile is coming from behind you, pull the helicopter up and fly back. The more agile helicopters will be better at this than ours. I'm now going to show you, in my opinion, the four best helicopters. They each have their own purpose for different combat situations, but all in all, when you've gotten comfortable enough with one of them, you can do most things like take out jets, deluxos, oppressors, people, cars, tanks, the list goes on. Helicopters are an underappreciated aspect of PvP. Starting off with the Savage, a big heavy Pegasus military chopper loaded with rockets that can be spammed and an explosive MG cannon that absolutely melts anything in its path. This chopper can hold up to 4 players with the ones on the side able to use any of their weapons such as snipers and rocket launchers, so with a full helicopter a crazy amount of rockets can be spammed onto players, although it is quite sluggish in terms of movement and can only take 2 rockets to blow up. It can be used to take down unsuspecting jets if you get the chance. A side note is that it is a Pegasus vehicle, but this means it can be called in at any time at various locations around the map, so it's a benefit in my eyes. This is definitely the most useful helicopter for solo players, trust me. The next helicopter is the Hunter, arguably one of the greatest helicopters when used with two people. The pilot can use a homing launcher and a barrage of missiles to shoot down at players or opposing aircrafts, with some experienced players able to take out oppressors and jets. Passenger has access to an explosive cannon and bombs that can be dropped down from above, which makes this the best helicopter for co-op slaughter. While solo it can be good, but you lose the ability of the explosive cannon and bombs. The Hunter can withstand 5 shots from a heavy sniper Mark II, with explosive rounds and free rockets from a rocket launcher or Mark II oppressor. Although the benefit this helicopter has, other than the other ones, are that it has countermeasures to prevent against oncoming homing launchers. Overall, it is an agile and quite fast helicopter that should be a must have for any team of two. Talking about a helicopter for more than one player, the Avenger is another absolute weapon of an aircraft. I don't know if you would call it a helicopter or not, but this acts as a flying MOC where you can get your Mark II weapons as well as a storage facility for special vehicles. There's lock on turrets around the Avenger with a drop in of bombs that fall underneath. It's a massive aircraft that can hover in one spot that can somehow fly into buildings and the ground without blowing up. The next helicopter is RFI Akula. A sneaky chopper that allows you to go off the radar whenever you want simply by pressing right on the d-pad. This means you can kill players and immediately go off radar to then come back and kill them again when they're not expecting it. This can stress a lot of people out which is funny to do on the deserving players. This heli also has the ability to drop bombs only this time from the pilot that can one shot players below you. It also has a fairly big blast radius so taking out a team of players below can come in clutch. It also has a choice of homing launchers or barrage missiles as well as holding 4 players at a time and takes 3 rockets to blow up. Moving on to jets, the weapon of mass destruction if used correctly. Firstly I'm going to go over the movements you should be using when flying a jet or any flying vehicle really. 
When you're flying down for an attack, you want to be using explosive cannons as the damage and explosion range on the jets are amazing. Although straight from high up doing a dive bomb, rather than flying from side to side, so you can hit your target straight on, as well as having way more time to firstly find your target and then aim for kill, then leave at various angles to avoid attacks from RPGs. Although explosive ammo on the sniper is your main concern for death, as we have already talked about. When strafing down, use both of your bumpers to spray a mass area on the player, especially if there is multiple players. Like I mentioned, the explosive sniper ammo, I'll remind you again, it takes three explosive bullets to destroy a laser, although one or two can cause the engine to smoke. Therefore, meaning the jet will be going slower, which as you can guess puts you at a great disadvantage against other vehicles or missiles. If you do find yourself getting followed by homing missiles, keep turning in any direction while pulling up on the left stick to avoid being hit. This somehow gives like a little bit faster boost and quicker turning. Overall also, it's important to use a lot of sharp turns to not be an easy target while constantly watching the map for any opposing threats coming your way. Although, use your camera at all times too, as it's common for players to go off the radar when fighting a jet. Some tips and tricks to keep in mind are to put the jet in a hovering position, hold LT while tapping RT. Fly backwards by flying up, then bring out landing gear. Hold left trigger and then RT to fly again when ready. Also, if you cannot afford a jet, you can always get one from the military base for free. Which if you own a hangar there, removes it from being a restricted zone, so you only have to worry about flying the jet out without getting shot down, but hey. That's just more practice. Now a quick overview of the best jets and the reasons why. Just know when it comes to jets, it really is preference once again and what you can control and the weapons you rather have. Starting with the Starling, this is the hardest to control. Although if you're serious about dogfighting, learning how to properly use the Starling as it is one of the best jets for air PvP. It is the smallest and most agile jet that no other jet can outmaneuver if you're on the same pilot level skill, although even a bad Starling pilot can be hard to kill, as well as being the only jet with a rocket boost that when used rationally is a great advantage. The Starling takes three rockets to be destroyed. Like I said, hard to fully learn how to use, but it's so worth it. The Starling also has a bomb and run weapon choice, which can be fun. Next is the laser, the most known and used jet in the game. This is mainly used for ground targets due to the explosive cannons that will destroy ground targets like players and vehicles very easily. Although the laser lacks in defense while also being a slow turning jet compared to the others, which makes it not good for dogfighting unless going against another laser or slower jet. One hit from the explosive cannon though could disable any jet so it can be used effectively when sneaky or use building as your advantage to outmaneuver another player. Can take two human missiles before being destroyed. The Hydra next. Very powerful against ground targets with the ability to hover in one spot mixed with the long range cannon weapon you can easily wipe out players in any area and reach many spots other jets would struggle to hit, as well as dodge homing missiles fairly easily. Although while the Hydra has one of the highest top speeds, the acceleration is pretty bad and it's really not the best for dogfights, so I recommend using it primarily for ground attacks. Finally is the Paro. This jet is also hard to learn due to the sharp fast movements that this vehicle has, although this means it is also one of the best when learned. With it being one of the fastest jets in the game, as well as dodging homing missiles very easily, making it practically impossible to hit, this jet also holds two people, which is a nice bonus. Personally, I am not the most experienced when it comes to air PvP, but with these tips, I still win the majority of dogfights. Nearly finishing this guide, this is the section you're going to learn a lot of tips you will most likely not know about, as well as being in the secret methods a lot of tryhards use to constantly have their upper hand. Some of these tips I personally don't believe in using due to the factor of being dirty, but this isn't a video of my personal opinions on playstyles. If you're a subscriber of mine, I'm going to give you all the help I know. I'll be going through them in no order. If you are facing against an enemy crew, mostly a crew that is small in numbers, if you get an invite to their crew, possibly by convincing one of their unsuspecting members to invite you, this means you will always have access to their lobby. When calling in a nearby vehicle or helicopter that spawns beside you, you can get it to spawn in front of you by running forward and pressing on the right stick to look backwards. Not a game breaking tip, but can save you the time of a vehicle spawning in the complete opposite direction that you're going. If you're flying a jet or plane that loses one wing, maybe due to an attack from another player or hitting a building, you can still fly the aircraft by turning it sideways so the wing still intact is facing the ground and pulling up on your analogue to pull the aircraft up on the damaged side. Very useful to fly out of a bad situation without needing to jump out. Fly back to your hangar this way to repair the plane or jet if you really want. Did you know you can spoof your location? Being inside tunnels that on the map look like a normal road or being in a different floor of a building that they may not be aware of. Or if you're on the roof beside an alleyway, if you look on the minimap, going right to the side of the roof makes it look like you're actually on the ground. 
This is great for enemies coming around corners, as they will aim at normal ground height to then be surprised by the heavens arrows. If you are doing this, don't go into cover, as it shows in the map which direction you are facing, and any average or above player knows which way the player icon moves when in cover. Make sure in your settings to turn off the allow spectators option to avoid enemies able to check your location on CCTV from an apartment TV. The reason you might not know why this is important is for the next tip, which is known as a dirty strategy. That's to have over two accounts in the same lobby, or have a friend in the lobby to spectate the enemy and give call outs to their location, what gun they're using, literally every move they take as they are spectating the player. An easier way to find a player's location, whether they have the setting turned off or not, is to use a strike team from the facility, which spectates the player and sends a strike team to kill them. Of course along with the facility is the orbital cannon, which we already covered, but don't be afraid to use brutal weapon on jets. When using thermal vision to snipe people, if they are at a distance or behind thick cover that their blip is hard to see, you can shoot rockets near the enemy as the heat from the explosion will make their blip more noticeable. Also using thermal in certain locations allows you to shoot through certain buildings at long distance, as well as thermal overall rendering players further than normal. You can shoot helicopters down faster by shooting at the rotor, as it's like a weak spot and can take the helicopter down in less shots than you would by shooting at the door or the front. The flare gun actually redirects any missiles coming your way. Aim at a good angle and you can cause a player to blow themselves up with their own homing missiles. Or if you're getting chased by homing missiles, constantly shooting the flare back or if you have another player with you, get them to constantly shoot the flare to avoid the homing missiles hitting you. This next tip I don't personally use unless my opponent is unit towards me or I'm in a really bad spawn location that is unfair. It is to take the easy way out if you're about to die or in general in a situation you're going to lose. You see this a lot in sniper situations that players drop a sticky bomb and if the opponent gets a hit marker on them they'll blow themselves up. Next isn't an advanced tip but just one to throw it in. That's to become a CEO in every PvP battle as this gives you instant spawn in selection to a range of vehicles can drop Bull Shark and activate perks such as Ghost Organization that keeps you off radar for 3 minutes or bribe a 40s that stops the police attacking you for a few minutes. Also in a mutual versus fight, invite the enemy to your CEO and turn on friendly fire. This makes you both spawn close to each other to avoid far annoying spawns since it's a planned 1v1. When it comes to passive mode, you will face many players that will try abuse it as much as they can. You can stop them from going into passive mode by placing a bounty on them, although of course this is only until you kill them again. But by starting VIP work, this stops players from going into passive mode. Of course you can do the old school method of driving a vehicle full speed towards them and jump out a few seconds before, as this will make the vehicle hit them with full impact and kill them. This can also be done when you're in passive mode and you want to kill someone that's not in passive mode, just do the exact same thing. Drive the car and just dash out and it'll kill them and there's no way they can get you back. Okay, next is teleporting. Yes, that is right. You can practically teleport anywhere at any time. Although at the minute, as far as I know, this can only be done on PC. Firstly, go onto the map, find a job, and then start it. Once you are fully zoomed out in the clouds, after the three zooms, start spamming right click and this will spawn you at the location of the chosen job. You can create your own jobs in good locations to use such as rooftops or near your hangar and safe houses. This is great for escaping bad situations and accessing your equipment easily. I know you want a very dirty trick, don't you? You want the you want you want the dirty trick. This is this is filth. You want the one shot absolutely every time when using a sniper and get yourself a VPN because this causes your ping to be a lot higher. I have no clips on this because I am not that interested in the extra steps just for sniping. But if you're going against very dirty advanced players, then I mean you do you get the VPN on. Second to last, we have the use of special vehicles. The drone is really good for annoying players with a taser, or even getting a cheeky explosion kill if you want to anger your opponent even more. The RC car is an OP piece of equipment that is near impossible to destroy, and when you're using it, your character disappears until you leave the RC, meaning you can practically hide with the RC if you need to leave the situation temporarily. The RC can also blow up a player. Next is RC tank. It does the same in terms of taking you and your blip off the map, as well as having a range of weapons to use against players that unless know how to rocket spam good are going to struggle to escape you. Finally, my last advanced tip for PvP is to look at your stats. So many people still don't know that their character stats play a big part in how you perform. You need strength to max to have the best health, stamina max to run and swim without stopping. There's so much more benefits. I have a video that shows all the fastest and most effective methods up to date on how to max your stats easily that I'll put in the description and the comments. Startups. I would really appreciate it if you have made it this far if you could check out my channel and leave a like and subscribe. It would honestly mean the world to me. Here we are, the final chapter of the video. 
If you're still watching, then I can promise you your dedication to improving your own set of skills will pay off greatly in not just the game, but in life. This chapter is short and really just to leave you with some methods on how to practice what you have just learned. First is to simply practice in director mode. This is good for getting used to settings, rolling, aiming and generally anything you need to get better at. Of course no practice is better than combat against real online players, but when trying out new sensitivity or controller layout, director mode is good for combat. With the option of god mode you can fight a lot of police. Starting a custom job you made or a pre-made one done it from Social Club built specifically for fighting bots is also good. Doing online deathmatches is also very good for constant PvP. That also limits you to a few basic weapons so you can try out all your raw fighting skills. Although I don't recommend this on PC unless you have friends to go against as it is impossible to find a deathmatch lobby that doesn't have modders abusing it. There's 1v1 deathmatches you can also download from Social Club that is made for 1v1 sniping which is perfect for practicing your sniping but when it comes down to it, the best practice is going out in the battlefield of free roam, go against any players willing to fight and keeping this guide in mind by applying what you've learned you will quickly improve. I recommend liking this video or saving it so you can come back to watch any of the sections that you feel is lacking the most. The way I've learned my past is I've got a book or I've got Microsoft Word or whatever and I watch videos like this and I make a list of all the points said in the video, all the factors I need to learn and I just pretty much keep going over them every day, I just keep getting better, keep getting better. My final summary is that the truth is PvP in this game is expensive, very expensive if you want to dominate all areas of combat. When it comes down to the art of an unfought gunfight, you can dominate that without needing to spend much money. Always have fun with PvP and don't let anyone dictate how you play the game. Have respect for others, but when a player is disrespectful or plays dirty then go all out and unleash everything you got. Thank you for watching this guide, if you subscribed it would be greatly appreciated and I hope you meet each other in the battlefield someday so you can show me all your new PvP skills. Until next time Spartans! I see you pimp, why haven't you clicked on any of my videos?